Canaltech Especial FutureCon 2014, cobertura completa e entrevistas exclusivas do mercado de telecomunicações. Olá, estamos aqui direto da FutureCon 2014 com mais uma entrevista. Agora estamos com o Hector Silva, CTO do Siena para a América Latina e vamos falar um pouco sobre como o aumento de uso de dados está pressionando as redes e as operadoras de telefonia. Hector, first I'd like to thank you for being here with us and for the interview. Well, I guess my first question is exactly this. It's no secret that Latin America is, is growing in numbers in usage of uh, data and mobile data uh, especially. Uh, how is that impacting the, the networks and uh, the usage of uh, for the carriers and system operators? Yeah, so, very good question. I think it comes essentially because the uh, way the consumers, the enterprises and, 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 and consumers are consuming bandwidth of, uh, from, from the network is, is, is changing. Uh, now we are in an on-demand world where all these applications are, that are growing and are fueled by all uh, the connectivity and the devices that we have now in, in our hands as end users demand a different behavior from the network from, from what it has been in the past. In the past, we networks used to connect fixed locations for fixed periods of time. Now with the applications, that, that, that has changed. So if you add to that, that the capacity is also increasing, not only where the demands are or for how long the demands will be in the network, it's creating a huge impact in the business models of our of the service providers. So that that's the main challenge: how how they cope in a cost-effective way to increase capacity and to give give more flexibility to, to their assets to provide uh, at the end uh, a better user experience uh, for us to be able to run all those applications and have a real-time response when we need it, where we need it, in in in, in where, wherever we are. And earlier this year, Siena, together with IDC, uh, presented a research that said that uh, until 2018, there will be an increase of 26% in the number of data centers in, in Latin America. How does that impact the region? Yes, that, that's a very important trend. It is the result of what we were discussing earlier. So, so in, in order to the users, there, there's two, two, two sections, let's say. In, the users need to, be, to, be, to get to those data centers first. So, the metropolitan networks are, are the, the, in, the, in the core, let's say, of uh, that connectivity. So the more users, the more bandwidth, you need better connectivity to the data centers. But then, if you inc start increasing those users that much, you create the necessity of have multiple data centers that also need connectivity between them. So uh, the increase of users and capacity results in the increase of data centers, that, uh, as, as you mentioned from that uh, uh, data point. Uh, which is also uh, impacting on, on, the, on the needs in the network. And for the companies, what are the challenges this brings to them? That's an excellent question as well, because it's not only about providing uh, better connectivity, but also how service providers can better monetize uh, that infrastructure that they need to put in place to, to make these communications uh, happen, but also that the companies uh, wanting to, to purchase from service providers those services no longer want to pay a fixed amount of, of, uh, of money for a fixed service that they won't be using all the time. Because th this new model that we are referring to, the, the new consumption model, uh, represents that I don't need to have, let's say, 100 gig capacity all the time between th those two data centers. So they are looking for options in the market with the service providers of who can offer them a f more flexible way of consuming the, the bandwidth. So they can have a better business model for themselves. Uh, and, and that's when on-demand comes in play. For example, if a, a, a service provider offers me uh, the same 100 gigs with higher, with a, a very good uh, availability, but only for the two hours of time uh, when the match the football match, for example, is, is coming for, for me to be able to transfer video in real time. But after that, I can come back to my normal operation where I don't need that capacity between those two data centers. That will become a differentiator for that service provider who can offer this type of flexibility in their services compared to another that it says, okay, if you want 100, I, I can sell that, that to you, but you have to pay me this much and by the way, you have to keep that for three years. And still talking about the companies, what are the, the main markets that are driving the growth of this uh, data usage? 
Well, we, we have uh, different areas, uh, different verticals. Uh, for example, uh, the, the content delivery is one of them, as we were discussing. Finance as well, uh, all data center replications that need not, not only very uh, low latency, very high availability, and uh, even other additional features like, like encryption, for example, are markets that are really driving the change into an on-demand model. So we have also mobility, all the mobility services, which uh, also it's an interesting point because everything is transitioning into the, that model uh, in terms of capacity, not, not only the data center world, but also the mobility side. So uh, uh, with LTE, new deployments, uh, new, new licensing in Latin America, represents that mobility is also moving into a, a higher uh, demand in terms of capacity, in terms of mobility. Uh, video, for example, distribution of video. Uh, companies like, like Netflix uh, transitioning now from high definition to, to 4K. Mm -hmm. It's about three times the bandwidth that the uh, one user needs to be able to, to have a 4K service in, at home. And 8K so, is just around the corner as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, uh, so and what I want to say is that we are experiencing right now that I would say the tip of the iceberg of what is coming in terms of uh, new demands in the network. So, uh, end users don't see what's beneath uh, their service, right? But service providers are the one really building that infrastructure that the end user will see as experience if they want to download a movie or run an application in an iPhone. If they cannot do it, then they will realize that something is wrong uh, and what we are doing is try to help uh, service providers to uh, differentiate through the performance of their network. We, we talk about performance on demand so they can, they can offer services better with a better user experience. So we believe the network matters right now more than ever before because of, of this experience that the user can quickly notice if, if their connectivity is not, connectivity is not working. And when you mention the on-demand model, uh, you're talking about the as-a-service model uh, that is currently very uh, well-known and well-discussed exactly. by the market. The, the network as a service exactly uh, allows you to, uh, as a service provider, to differentiate, as we were saying, your services not only to fix, but to on-demand or flexible bandwidth, or elastic bandwidth, if you will. Uh, and, and, and for the end user, uh, having the network as a service on-demand, it's uh, what really helps you uh, transition into that new world. How does it exactly work for the company? How can you deploy it? How does it work uh, if your company wants to enter in this uh, network as a service model? Well, that's when software becomes one of the key elements uh, of, of the solution because uh, we are talking now about uh, things like big data, real-time analytics, so you can understand as a service provider how your end users' demands are behaving. So you can create a customized, a mass customization offer to those type of customers and, and based on that information. But the reality is that uh, networks in the past have been uh, built in a static way. So they, networks traditionally don't have the capability to, even knowing the information, to react or to adapt uh, in real time to create a new offer or new bandwidth in a different location on, on demand on, on real time. So that's what I was saying, uh, software, uh, for example, software-defined networks allow you to enhance the behavior of your network by uh, creating uh, uh, an intelligence that can send the orders, let's say, for the network to, to react to that information of the customer. So you require two components to implement that. The, the software itself, that you can think of as an as operating system or the brain who understands the market and, and, and defines how the network should behave. That's the first component. But the other is, is the, pla the platform, with the, what we call the platform or the network itself, has to be a programmable uh, asset or a programmable platform because if you have the intelligence but you cannot apply the actions, let's say, to the network, it, you don't close the equation, right? So you need both a programmable platform, a hardware that can be modified by software, the behavior can be modified by software, and the software itself, uh, which we call the, the controller and the applications to, to run the, those type of services. And still in this as a service model, uh, do you think it will be mandatory for companies in the future to adopt this model? Will companies that don't go into software as a service, infrastructure as a service, or even network as a service, try to uh, be able to survive in the... Excellent question, because I, I think 
it won't, right now it's kind of a, a trend, right? Like everybody's talking, trying to understand. But we believe this will become a must for a company to survive because, or to compete, to, to differentiate. Companies that, that are, are not necessarily embracing that will, will tend to, to fall back or, or, or to lag behind, let's say, the, the market. Uh, how you are going then to compete? The, the only answer for them to compete uh, will be initially to by, by price. That will, that will be in detriment of their business. So on-demand and network as a service allows them to uh, protect their revenues, decrease their costs, uh, and offer new services. So at the end, that's, that won't be any more an option in the future because that's what the market will be demanding. And, and, and we believe there's nothing to be won by waiting on this transition to happen. The, the, the companies that will be better prepared, we believe, are the ones that start uh, transforming their business into this direction from today and, and we can do it from today. And how do you see the adoption of these uh, modern networks here in Latin America, especially in Brazil? Yes, I think Brazil is one of the m biggest and more innovative markets in Latin America. I think there are a lot of companies uh, already starting to, to uh, develop proof of concept scenarios to try to build their own business models. Uh, to start thinking about how we, how they can offer this type of new services uh, in Latin America. So Brazil is, is ahead of, of, of the market. Mm -hmm. Especially in what sectors of the market? Espe I say especially in financial, 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 financial services. Yeah. So I guess my last question would be, uh, the widely, more widely accepted statistic is that by 2020 we will have uh, 50 billion connected devices in the world. Um, and many of them in an end to end fashion, so yes. connecting directly to one, or other, one another. Uh, how is that going to impact the networks and will have a, a new revolution in the future? Yes. Yeah, we're moving, we believe, also to an intelligent world, let's say, where everything is going to be connected, where information is generated everywhere, not only by, by humans, but actually by, by things and machines. So that uh, creates even more pressure uh, in, in the network, in the optical networks concentrating and the, and the transport networks concentrating all this uh, information and data from, from the machines and the end users into these processing centers of information. At the end, what these applications are looking is for value. So with the information they collect, they can get a response in real time about a value of the business, for example. Uh, we can talk about uh, intelligent, all intelligence in practically any industry, you know, like agriculture. You know? We have sensors in the, in the earth, in the ground, that they can measure the humidity and, 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 and factors that affect, uh, for example, agriculture. That information is, needs to be uh, sent to that processing center to be able to create a reaction or, or, or health, for example. You know? and devices that, that people use that can send in real time how your, your hair is, is, is behaving or in the consumer market. Many different examples that the value that those companies are, are, are creating for the end user depends on how well the network behaves to provide those services. So the network has to have the capability and the flexibility to, pro to support all that uh, tsunami of data. Right? It, it, it's, it's growing and growing at the point that everything is going to be generating information. So, so I, we believe it, it, it's a, a very important trend that, that needs to be uh, addressed by transforming the networks starting from today. And that's uh, the most discussed thing about 5G, for example. Everyone is saying that it's more than just about more speed to the network. It's also more security, a better yes. architecture for these kinds of yes. usage. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly, because the, as, as you said, the, the business model of, of the companies providing that, that, those services uh, cannot uh, multiply their cost to provide the, the solution in the same way that the data is growing, right? So you need to find a way to decouple the, the, the increase of capacity to the increase of cost. So the type of solutions uh, that, that uh, we are building precisely allows you to, to decrease cost and to maximize your, your revenue. So just a, as an example of how big this is uh, uh, happening, uh, we have uh, also inf uh, information that, for example, during the uh, uh, Brazil-Germany match, for example, it was generated like 200 million uh, Facebook posts during that game. So you can imagine that 
the way communications are behaving, it's completely different from, I mean, you cannot predict necessarily or uh, uh, build static capacity for, for this new model that you're, you're talking about. You can have some time in uh, a specific event that is generating you a lot of capacity that you need it at that moment uh, for the full capacity because many users need to have that experience. But after that, it, it will have to be redistributed in your network. So how can I move capacity in a flexible way to support those machine-to-machine -machine and, and trends about uh, intel an intelligent world? It, it's, it's because of the importance of, of having this type of flexibility. Hector, I'd like to thank you very much for the interview and thank you for joining us. Rafael, thank you very much.